Ahoy there, dear fellows! This is Rodrigo Quintano, also known as Quindigo, speaking here. I want to show you the current status of a personal project of mine in the Unity 3D game engine. This project has been frozen for a while and sadly it will have to remain that way somewhat longer. The fact is that I like procedural content generation for games a lot and hopefully the features of this small project will show that I have a couple of useful skills for that matter. This might even help me find a job, who knows. So, this project is intended to generate a terrain for a spaceship shooting game. Let's play the scene and check the result. This is the terrain being prepared in steps and... There! That's my spaceship! Let's pause the simulation and take a look at the terrain we got. The first thing I'd like to highlight is related to level design. Before the terrain is created, the game space is split into areas. The game space is represented by a matrix. In this example, the game space is represented by a 29 per 29 matrix of square cells. You know that ink bucket tool that many image editors offer, right? You click on a spot and the ink starts spreading from there pixel by pixel. My approach to define the areas is based on that ink flooding idea. Given a desired number of areas, the script chooses a random starting position in the matrix for each area. Then a loop makes all areas spread a little in all available directions in every iteration. The growing areas are limited by other growing areas, taking a narrow separation between them into account. Note that this approach defines big areas and also narrow areas that I named frontiers. Here. This in the center is an area, this in the left is another area, and these gray separations are the frontiers. This approach gave me interesting and organic results. Check these other areas distribution maps logged as a text file. Each letter represents an individual area. Interesting, eh? Now, take a look at the object's hierarchy. The level map... This. The level map object got many children during runtime. There is one object for each area, one object for each frontier, and also one object for each dummy space. Dummy spaces are the leftovers when you consider as frontier only cells that separate exactly two neighbor areas. If we click a level map child, we can see the corresponding portion of mesh highlighted in the editor. Another thing I want to pinpoint is that frontier meshes are allowed to have a different level of details than that of area meshes. And despite of that, the meshes are designed to fit neatly without leaving holes in the game world. Let's check the level of details of the wireframes. Do you see? frontiers have a higher level of detail. But there are no holes in the mesh of the game world. Okay, after defining areas and frontiers, the script builds a random sequence in which the areas could be visited by the player and assigns a base height for each area. 
The base height of two consecutive areas in that sequence is different by just a small amount. Also, consecutive areas in that sequence should be connected by a passage through the frontier between them. For now, the frontiers receive a spiky and rough terrain, like this. And the passages that connect areas are smooth slopes, like this. You probably noticed that there are much more passages than necessary in this example. For debugging purposes, I ask the script to ignore the area sequence and add more passages, even if the difference of base heights between areas is large. The larger the difference between area heights, the longest the slope must be. Internally, the heights map of a frontier spiky terrain is calculated first, and the smooth passage slope is overlaid after. For now, the areas have only one kind of terrain, which is a smooth one. The rule for test purposes is that the more distant of a frontier a cell is, the larger will be its height. Cells with higher heights are getting a grass texture for reference. The nice feature here is that I distribute some heights among the cells of the area, and the script creates a smooth mesh that respects those heights. The last thing I want to highlight is the shader applied to this terrain. It uses four base textures, rock, earth, grass and tile, and a texture built during runtime that works as a map. Here. Do you see a tiny map of the game world? Each spot of the world space is painted with different values of up to four textures, and this painting information is stored in the red, green, blue and alpha channels of the map texture. In this example, the resolution of this map texture offers 16 per 16 pixels for each cell of the game world matrix. The beauty of this approach is the blend of textures we get at differently painted regions. Do you see a soft transition from earth to grass? Here also, soft transition from rock to earth. Okay, that's it. The terrain begins to get interesting to explore. The mechanics of the movement of this ship is not complete yet, but it will be enough for an, er an early ride. I think that exploring terrain is great. Just figure out what will it be when we have enemies shooting at the ship. Well, that's reserved for the future. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention and patience. Bye!